Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero episode, and I tell you what, this hero, ladies and gentlemen, has been listening to Eco Ask Why since the third episode. He's, he's, a, he's a regular listener. We got connected through one of our account managers, Mr. Joe Clark in Virginia, and when he said, you need to talk to Chester Burke, who's the controls engineer at Cadence, I was like, okay. So, and then when I connected with Chester, it was an immediate connection. I was like, Chester, we, we definitely need to have you as a, as a guest. Want to get your story. Welcome, Chester. I'm excited for this conversation. Yes, sir. I am certainly not a hero. <laughs> if you ask me what a hero is, it's first responders and people in the military, either active or reserve or our veterans. They're the heroes. I just demand works for a living. Amen. Amen. I, and I support that completely, Chester. But I tell you what, in my eyes, too, you're the guy who gets up and you make that that plant work, that plant operate, which it, this in turn makes this country move forward. So, you know, I'm going to argue with you on that hero part, but we'll, uh, you know, we'll just agree to disagree there. But uh, so excited to have you on here, you know, talking about your journey. I know you got a lot of exciting things to do, so I'm going to get out the way and let you get started by telling us, you know, how do you got to where you are now? Well, it was um, quite a journey. It was not clear cut uh, by no means. Um, I guess um, I, when I was in school, I didn't, ha I didn't like it. Okay. Uh, I didn't like high school at all. I um, wanted out and um, I wanted to get out of that. I didn't like, didn't like the discipline. I didn't like uh, all that went with it. Uh, the riding the school bus, I wanted out. And, um, when I got out, uh, and looked at, uh, what was facing me, I went, Oh no, I screwed up. And, um, that started, uh, my journey, as you say, mm -hmm. uh, to get where I am right now. Um, um I was, um, let's see, there's several things I go into, like I was always interested in electricity. Mm -hmm. Um, I had an uncle uh, when I was 10 years old who was uh, electrocuted. He was killed at, uh, at the Back Creek storage facility when they were building that. And that was devastating. And uh, I always wondered, what is this force that uh, took him away from us? Mm -hmm. um, when I uh, got into 11th grade of high school, I, was, I took Votech classes instead of college prep classes and mm -hmm. i uh, was in the electronics program because of said interest and um i took a summer job between my junior and senior year as an electrician's helper for an electrical contractor who was building a nearby prison that was being built and um one day uh, we were out uh, digging ditches literally digging ditches uh, and laying conduit in the bottom and covering them back up, and taking the tamper and tamping everything down. And I saw this guy ride by in a convertible and short sleeve dress shirt and a tie. And I asked one of my coworkers, I said, who's that? Oh, that's a job engineer. And I said, okay, what's it take to be an engineer? Oh, you have to be smart and go to school for that. <laughs> All right. And, um, when I went back for my senior year in high school, I went, Oh no, uh, I do want to be an engineer. Uh, but I have not taken a single preparatory class and no, no university is going to even let me in the door. Mm -hmm. I hadn't even taken the SATs. I never have, by the way. Uh, so during my stay at Votech, uh, Warner Scott was our teacher. He, uh, took me aside one day and he said, you know, there's an electronics program at the local community college, Dabnes Lancaster uh, in Clifton Forge. And he said, I think you might would be very good at that. So when I graduated from high school and I was sitting on the couch, my dad walked in and said, you can't do that. I said, what do you mean? And he said, you can't sit there on that couch. You're either going to go in the military, you're going to go to school, or you're going to go to work. And I remembered what Warner said, so uh, Mr. Scott, and I uh, said, so well, I'd like to go out to Dabney. 
And my dad said, all right, I'll pay for one semester. And at the end of that semester, I made straight A's. And I found my calling. I love college because no one cared. If you showed up in class, whether you did the work or whatever, it was all on your shoulders. Right. And I said, I can do this. So, um, I, uh, got my, uh, associate's degree. I looked at my opportunities and I said, this is not the engineer I want to be. And, um, we, um, went for some field trips to some universities. I went to your alma mater, ODU, Mm -hmm. and, uh, we went to UNCC that's university of North Carolina at Charlotte. And I'm sorry. I like that school better. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I, I went there and, uh, uh, I paid for it by being a, um, co-op student, okay. uh, with, with general electric in Hickory, North Carolina. And if people don't know what that is, that's where you really hired as an engineering trainee and, uh, you work a semester at your employer and then you go to school full time the next semester and you alternate like that till you graduate. Mm-hmm. It adds a year to your stay, but, uh, that was priceless for me. That gave me, um, some experience and what the engineers do and also help pay for the entire stay. Um, after that, um, I came home, I was, um, uh, broke, unemployed, but debt free. (laughs) There you go. There you go. So, um, I was fortunate enough to get an interview and even more fortunate enough to get a job at Burlington Industries in Glasgow, Virginia, where I was the controls engineer for about 19 and a half years. Okay. Uh, and that's where I got my real education. That's where I learned how to be a controls engineer and all that comes with it. Then um, I was doing mostly uh, troubleshooting, modernization, and sometimes uh, design work. Um, but after Burlington went bankrupt and the new owners decided that I wasn't needed anymore, um, I went to work for a little company called Gala Industries and, uh, I think Eagle Rock, good bunch of people. I like them, mm-hmm. enjoyed working there, but I still wanted to be that design engineer. Mm-hmm. So when this, uh, opportunity came open here at Cadence, where I'm currently their controls engineer. Uh, I took it and right now I'm a member of a, uh, engineering group because we make, um, specialized components for medical and industrial devices. And we have to design and build our own production equipment. So I'm part of that team of, um, engineers. I'm like, uh, I'm the only electrical. I tell people that I'm a, a leaf in an ocean of mechanical engineers <laughs> and, uh, we design our own equipment and I really like this. This is, um, this is where I wanted to be from back when I was digging ditches. That is, that is such a, such a great story. I mean, from, from that, from digging those ditches to look, you know, to where you're at right now. And I mean, I didn't realize about the, uh, the GE co-op, what a great opportunity. That sounds like it was to get you that exposure as well as the help from a financial standpoint to get that education taken care of. Yes, it was. Like my dad said, uh, boy, I didn't know how much you were costing me until you stopped. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. That's right. Well, you know, you, you've been, you're, you're out there at cadence now, you know, you've been in several industries, Chester, and, you know, I'm really curious on your take on what some of the the biggest challenges that you're seeing out there right now. So what, what would they be? Well, it seems to be a common problem across all manufacturing that we are having difficulties finding skilled, talented people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't really know why. Um, whether the schools are not teaching what we need from the start or, or what the issue is. So yeah. um, anybody with, you know, would like to get into this field, yeah, th- there's, there's some needs out there. Yeah. Very much so. I mean, speak to that, you know, give some advice, Dan, say somebody does want to get into this field because I'm with you and we, we hear that skills gap consistently on the show. And we've, we've talked to some wonderful people who are trying to address that, you know, with some really cool initiatives. And we even have 
you know, other guests coming up to talk about it more. What advice would you give someone? Why, why should they take a career in industry or manufacturing? Well, it's most of the time you're indoors. Right. So you're cool in the summer, warm in the winter, unless you have a particular aspect of the manufacturing that doesn't allow that. Um, uh, so far manufacturing is everywhere. The skills that you learn in one manufacturing facility can be applied to all manufacturing facilities. We all have the same kind of things we got to work on, maybe some differences, maybe some specialities, but, uh, I'd say that it's, it's worthwhile. So trans and, uh, transferable skill set. Yes. Got it. Yep. Absolutely. Now. When, um, if you're asking me, you know, uh, what does it take to be a controls engineer? Well, that was my wandering path. Um, I would say if you want to be more in the maintenance department, mm -hmm. there may be some community colleges that offer certificates on, um, stuff like that. Uh, if you want to go up into modernization, I'd say at least an associate's degree. If you want to go up to um, actually designing from a, a blank sheet of paper, probably a bachelor's. And if you want to go up even higher than that, work for Rockwell or Siemens, design components, you may want a master's maybe. Right. Um, I'm always asked the question, do I need a degree? Mm -hmm. um, the answer is no, but... Um, I have worked with uh, very talented, capable people mm -hmm. who did not have a degree. And I have worked for talented, capable people who did. And um, I think it's safe to say that you will have more opportunities uh, to learn and demonstrate uh, your talents if you have a degree. Right. So a degree is worthwhile. It's worth getting. I would recommend it. Um, so, uh, I, I started to notice like, uh, large corporations require degrees. That's one of the ways they weed out the, uh, the resumes, mm -hmm. you know, who has a degree, who doesn't, uh, smaller corporations or companies, um, they need to work done. Yeah. A little more leniency so, there, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm in no way poo-pooing on anybody with a degree or anybody without a degree mm -hmm. because what really determines whether you do well in your job and you're able to keep your job is what you can do yeah. not how many degrees you have that's right all those all those i'll probably get in trouble for saying this but one thing a degree does is it demonstrates on paper that you have the capability to learn Sure. Absolutely. Now, you know, when, when you're thinking about this and, and that, and that mindset for someone that's, that's wanting to pursue that career in manufacturing, sometimes I'm wondering if it's a stigma, you know, you mentioned you working inside, you know, there's security, there's different types of things, but sometimes people think manufacturing, they still go back to the, to the history channel and, and they're picturing four model T's going down the line and you're standing there doing that same thing all day. So, you know, is there anything about manufacturing that you like to debunk to maybe open the eyes to people out there who just really don't understand about your world? Modern manufacturing is not dirty. It is not unsafe. Mm -hmm. It is clean and technically advanced. A lot of the stuff you saw on those historical films of making model T's where people were doing is being done by robots. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of, um, influx of robotics. Mm -hmm. Uh, if a person had an opportunity to specialize in robotic programming, that'd be something I would consider. Yeah. Uh, I'm seeing robots. Ever. I deal with them today. Uh, I have to program them. I have to, to pick them out and, uh, we're all the time looking to, use a robot where uh, a person would go out of their mind right. in about an hour or two doing that over and over and over again. Right. We, we like to use people in positions where you think and you have to make decisions. That's where a human is, uh, in my opinion, most valuable. Great, great point. 
Great point. Now you also mentioned, you know, let's let's stick on that theme to help people understand uh, the 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 value of manufacturing. You mentioned the importance of mentors and and how it is to help people along. Anybody, any any situation stand out in, in your your mind about your in your past that it, that helped you along in your career? Oh yes, uh, I have been blessed. The good Lord blessed me with a lot of good people in my life. Um, like my father, for one, I mean, he, he, he was a great man. Um, I still miss him terribly. He, he gave me a good work ethic. Uh, basically if you want it bad enough, you'll figure out a way, right. Uh, you, you're, you have to make your life. Nobody's going to give you your life, right. You have to go ahead and make it like I, I think I mentioned Warner Scott, um, uh, my Votech teacher, he was a man who told me that, look, it doesn't matter where you start, you don't have to end up there. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can make changes. Um, I had a neighbor of my, uh, my, my parents, uh, Edmund Davison. He, uh, started his own business making handmade knives and in his field, he's pretty well known for that. Uh, he started with nothing except a plan. He said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And he taught me the meaning of the word tenacity. Never saw a stubborn man like that, <laughs> but, uh, he, he taught me, you make a plan, you stick with it no matter what. Um, my professor, um, at Dabney, Mel Herwald, um, he was a character. I, I, I love Mel to death. Um, and he told me once, Chester, if you can get along with me, you can get along with anybody. And he was right. Right. <laughs> um, so mentors weird. are incredibly important. I mean, that they, they will shape you as a person. No doubt. No doubt. Now I'm curious, Chester, you know, with these hero episodes, when are you happiest? You know, what, what work are you doing that brings you the most joy? I like to be creative. Okay. Um, I like to, um, start with nothing and make something. Um, I like to, uh, I like automating. I, I like my job. Uh, one time I was sitting up in a uh, loft in a ceiling back at Burlington and we had these pressurized, uh, uh, yarn dyeing machines and there were six of them. And, um, I was sitting in front of a computer screen and I clicked a button and I started all six of them at the same time. And I made the floor shake and, uh, the bowler house probably threw a fit because there went all their steam <laughs> at that point. Right. But I was, I was sitting up there in that loft and I was hearing the roar and feeling the floor. And I went, this is pretty neat. I wonder if anybody noticed. <laughs> so, um, I, I like my job and the importance that comes with it. But, um, what really makes you always ask people why, and the, the what really makes me smile and makes me go home feeling good about myself is once in a while I'll have an operator who, um, has to stand in front of that machine and, and work all day doing this or that. Right. And I'll come along and, uh, they'll suggest something and I'll make it happen. It changes how the machine works and, uh, it makes their life a little bit easier and they just smile up the storm. And I really like that part of my job and the same way with the maintenance guys. If I can give them the, the information they need to get the machine up and running, even, you know, I, I'm anal about my electrical prints. Yeah. Uh, they need to be right and they need to be easy to read. And, and that's, that's how these guys and girls, you know, keep these machines running. So I like it when they brag on my prints. <laughs> so. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I mean, it, it, you just hear the passion in your voice, Chester. And, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, one thing as a long time listener, we're going, we're going, we're going to take a, a turn here and let's talk about you outside of work. Cause I mean, I'm anxious to hear this stuff. What do you, you know, so far as like, what do you do, like doing for fun? Any hobbies? Yes. Okay. Um, I like target shooting. Okay. I do. I, um, uh, guns. Yes. Target shooting in particular. I'm not a hunter. I like to shoot paper. Okay. And, and the reason why you always ask why, um, is when I sit down and with this rifle and I'm trying to hit this very, very small target, hundreds of yards away. Uh, 
I have to be in total control of my physical and mental state. Yeah. And then with mental, you don't care what, what has happened. You don't care what's going to happen. Only thing you care about is what is happening. Mm -hmm. And it is for me, it's a great eraser. I erase all stress and I'm only concentrating on the task at hand. Okay. And, uh, my wife, I love my wife. She will tell me at times, go to the gun range and come back in a better mood. <laughs> she knows you well, huh? She knows me well. <laughs> We've been married for 20 years. She knows me well. So what's your, what's your favorite gun? Uh, when it comes to rifles, um, I like the AR 15s. Okay. When it comes to pistols, I'm a Beretta fan, particularly oh. the Beretta 92. Okay. So you have expensive taste. Got it. Ah, uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it. I love it. We'll have to get to, to go to a gun range with you, Chester. Now you mentioned your wife, you know, we love talking about family on eco ask why. So what would you like to share with us about your family? Well, uh, my wife and I have been married, um, for 20 years. Uh, this past month was our 20th. Um, I'm very proud of my wife. Uh, when we got married, she decided to go to college okay. and she is now a BSRN, uh, at, uh, Augusta health over here in Fishersville. Okay. Um, she, she keeps me grounded. Let's just say that. <laughs> That's knows me very well and she keeps me grounded and she's stubborn in all the right ways. And I love her dearly. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Any, any other family in the area? I know you, you said that's where you're originally from, right? Just where you're at. Yes. I'm, I'm from, um, basically Goshen, Virginia. Okay. And, um, uh, uh, I've, I've, I grew up in, uh, Bells Valley, which is a little bit North of Goshen. And I went through Rockbridge County's public schools. Ghost Elementary, Brownsburg Middle School, and the real Rockbridge High in Fairfield. Uh, not the one in Lexington, the one in Fairfield, which has long been closed. Uh, I have a, a going to be 13 year, 13 year old daughter in the next couple of months, and she's too much like her dad. <laughs> too much like her dad, huh? Too much like her dad. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing about your family. It sounds like you got a lot of great things happening there. You know, I am curious, Chester, I know you are a, a big Eco Ask Why podcast fan, but any other resources that you like from a podcast or YouTube or, or just books in general that you found value in? Well, <laughs> um, no, I have to admit that yours is the only uh, podcast with this subject matter that I've run across. If there's more, I'd. I'd listen to them. Um, uh, Control Engineering is a magazine I love mm -hmm. to, uh, to subscribe to and, and read. Um, I'm I might be might call me weird, but I'll take home a operator's manual and either a PDF or a, or a book and um, leaf through it and wonder how this thing works. There you go. Um, where in Burlington, a friend of mine, Dwayne Cox, used to say, um, people say, nobody reads the manual. And, and uh, he would shake his head and say, no, I know one person who will read the manual. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be somebody, right? Yeah. <laughs> very good. Very good. Well, thank you again for being such a loyal listener. And Chester, you are the reason, you know, why we, we put the show together. And I'm excited. We're getting ready to get into our lightning round. I'm anxious to hear some of your favorites uh, uh, as, as, a, as one of the, the eco why regulars. So let's get started if, you, if you're willing to play. All right, let's go. All right. So what's your favorite food, Chester? Thin crust pizza. Oh, man. All right. Now, any, any adult beverage preferences? Well, my wife will allow me to drink a Bahama Mama once a year on my birthday. How about that? There you go. Once a year on your birthday. Good lady, Bahama Mama. I hear you, buddy. Now, what's your uh, what's your favorite app on your phone? <laughs> uh, my favorite app. Uh, 
I guess I spend way too much time on Facebook and Fox News. <laughs> there you go. Okay. All right. There you go. Now, what's uh, I'm curious, what's on your nightstand? It may be an operator's manual. I may already know this, but what's, what? <laughs> <laughs> what's on my nightstand? You mean as far as books? Oh, just anything. I mean, do you have anything on it? I'm I'm just curious. What's that? What what what? what what do you have there? Uh, I'm sorry, an alarm clock. <laughs> there you go. How about a uh, what's a guilty pleasure? A guilty pleasure. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> a guilty pleasure. I I'm pretty good. I don't have any guilty pleasures. Okay. I don't, I'm not guilty. <laughs> For me, it's any. It's it's got to be uh, peanut M and M's. But I mean, that's just who I am. You know, I run so I can have peanut M and M's. That's just the way it works. You I know? need to run more. Let's just say that. <laughs> what's about? What's your favorite sports team? Well, this is why I always get in trouble. Okay. Um, when I was growing up, uh, I watched a lot of baseball. Yeah. And uh, it was always the Yankees and the Dodgers. We're talking right. the 1970s. And it was Reggie Jackson. It was Tommy Lasorda. It was, uh, was it, what was that manager's name? Billy Martin. So whenever someone you know, asked me, what's your favorite team? I'll probably, you know, lean towards the L.A. Dodgers. Because they were always like the underdogs. The Yankees was beating them every time they go to the World Series. Right. And people look at me like, what? <laughs> why, why aren't you a Atlanta Braves fan? You know, why aren't you a Washington Nationals fan? I like, don't oh, know. I'm, I kind of shed a tear when Tom Ellis sort of died. So there. There you go. All right. <laughs> now, what's your uh, all time favorite movie? Oh, man. I'm a very big movie fan. Uh, I sit down in front of Netflix and just started rating movies. And when I finished, there was over 1,200. Oh, my gracious. Okay. Yes. I spent way too much time watching movies. But I, I look at movies as an art form. Um, they can be true artworks and they can be awful. All right. Um, I mean, um, like the, the Godfather trilogy, mm-hmm. Apocalypse Now. Um, Forrest Gump, um, those those movies have a lot to say. Yeah. Uh, if I had to pick a favorite, um, the one I always go to is one probably nobody has seen. Okay. It is a it is a Willie Nelson Gary Busey movie called Barbarossa. It's okay. a western, and Willie Nelson plays this outlaw in Mexico, and his in laws are trying to kill him. And uh, it's it's a hilarious movie. It has a lot good to say about family. He he loves his wife. He will not leave her, even though the in-laws keep sending people to kill him. Right. And he he had develops a friendship with this uh, farm boy played by Gary Busey. And I could watch that movie over and over. And I can quote whole scenes. (laughs) I hear you. (laughs) Nobody's nobody's seen it. How about uh, favorite music? Uh, I am a country music fan okay and i guess you should call it uh cla- classic country music uh i am a tremendous waylon jennings fan oh wow okay um i'm not a fan at all of today's country music i'm sorry for those who do who are as far as i'm concerned country music died a terrible death years ago <laughs> But I still love Waylon Jennings, Willie Nelson, Alan Jackson, all of that stuff. But the new stuff, I couldn't even tell you who was nominated at the CMAs. I hear you. I hear you. And the last one, you know it's coming. Dogs or cats? All right. I've been thinking about this one. Okay. I'm going to take the safe answer uh, for 200 and uh, <laughs> say that it's both. Okay. Uh, when I was uh, a kid, I had a purebred collie named Kojak, uh-huh. and I had Kojak from when I was eight years old to about 18, and the dog passed away. I've never had a dog since. Uh, it's too painful. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes to cats, my wife and daughter convinced me that during the pandemic to get a cat so we have, and as long as I told them that's all right, as long as I don't have to feed it, take care of its box or anything like that. Right. So we have a cat in the house that I have to admit isn't too bad. Okay. Okay. Well, I, we'll, we'll let it slide. That's a good, that's good stuff. But we have a, I have a cat myself. He stays outside. We get along cause we stay out of each other's way, but uh, it's good stuff. Well, Chester, 
that was fun. That was a fun lightning round. I loved getting to know you more. This has been a just an outstanding hero, and yes, I did say hero episode. Ah. So uh, you know, you know, we wrapped this the eco ask why up with the why, Chester, and I, I'm really curious on what your personal why is, sir. My personal why, <laughs> uh, I'll have to say that, as corny as it sounds, and it does sound corny, uh, I like helping people. I like to learn. And I like to leave things a little better than I found it. Well, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's not corny at all, Chester. I think that you are uh, definitely one of our heroes. I'm so glad we got connected. I've loved learning about you through this episode today. And I know that it will definitely put a smile on a lot of our listeners' faces. Uh, you know, for those out there that, that want to, I know, Chester, you're on LinkedIn. We'll, we'll have your LinkedIn profile there. If people want to reach out and learn more about a controls engineer, we'll have that available in uh, thank you so much for being such a wonderful guest. Well, thank you for having me. You do a professional, wonderful job, and I look forward to your next episode. Thank you, Chester. You have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit EcoSY.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.